Many decades ago, going green wasn't necessarily a top priority. In fact, they didn't even know that global warming was an issue. Back then, electric cars and hybrids were just experiments, concepts, or prototypes. Most of them never made it into production, and some were sold in very limited quantities because they were very expensive. Good fuel economy on cars had never really been a big selling point for them. Until the 1973 oil crisis hit and greatly affected us. There was a nationwide shortage of gasoline that caused prices to nearly quadruple, making fuel efficiency a very important thing to look for when buying cars. The consumer demand for higher fuel economy forced automakers to re-engineer cars from the ground up and seek greener alternatives. Fulfilling the general public's demands for higher fuel economy wasn't easy. Improving fuel efficiency often meant sacrificing performance and aesthetics for entire vehicle lineups, especially sports cars like these 1974 and 1978 Ford Mustangs. It was based off the Ford Pinto to get up to 34 miles per gallon. Despite being criticized for being underpowered and really not that good looking and not all that sporty, they still sold more than a million of them. While exploring new horizons, automakers started rolling out many new compact cars like the bare bones Chevy Chevette that didn't even come with an FM radio and also the Ford Escort, which had a much longer production run. Diesel engines have been put in some production cars for the American market, mostly from European automakers. Cars equipped with diesel motors, like this Mercedes-Benz 300D, get much better gas mileage than their gasoline counterparts. What about the Americans? Didn't they use diesel? The answer is yes, but it didn't take off until very recently because of one car that gave American diesels a very bad image for almost a couple of decades after production ceased. That car was the Oldsmobile Cutlass Diesel. It was based off one of GM's most popular production cars at the time, the Oldsmobile Cutlass, but was powered by a diesel engine instead of one that runs on gasoline. Excellent fuel economy was the only good thing about it. Otherwise, it was a disaster. Because it was highly unreliable, the engine sounded like one on a diesel truck, and it blew lots of black smoke. Decades later, automakers seemed to have figured most things out, and green cars have finally started to maintain a good image, and get the attention of people in a good way. I will show you pros and cons of each category, and mention how they work. Hybrids haven't been in production for very long even though they've been experimented with for many decades. In 1995, Toyota unveiled the Prius at the Tokyo Auto Show. In 1996, Toyota started making the Prius available to Japanese consumers for the 1997 model year and became the first hybrid made in large quantities. It had a 57 horsepower gas engine paired with a 40 horsepower electric motor that was made to get outstanding fuel economy. However, the Prius didn't make it to American showrooms until 2000 when the more powerful second generation was released. Contrary to popular belief, the Toyota Prius wasn't the first hybrid to reach American showrooms. It was actually the Honda Insight, which beat it by two months. The Honda Insight was a three-door, two-seater hatchback that got an EPA-estimated fuel economy of 61 city and 70 highway, which is quite amazing to this The day. Prius arrived shortly after, gaining impressive sales numbers. In 2003, some celebrities showed that they cared about the environment by showing up to award ceremonies in Toyota Priuses instead of limos. In 2003, Toyota released the third generation Prius. It had received a radical redesign that turned it into a hatchback, replacing the former sedan form factor. Sales were skyrocketing, which put them in high demand. They were so popular at one point, 
people were put on a six-month waiting list just to get one. The car was so groundbreaking at the time that it received Motor Trend's 2004 Car of the Year Award. The unprecedented success of the Prius made other car companies want to manufacture hybrids. So how does a hybrid work? Hybrids use a combination of an electric motor powered by batteries and a conventional engine fueled with gasoline. This combination is made to maximize fuel economy and go to the gas station less frequently as a result. Hybrids get better fuel economy in the city than on the highway because electric motor powers the car when gas motors are least efficient. Hybrids use something called regenerative braking to put more charge into the batteries. Hybrids will also shut off when the engine would be idling and starts up when the accelerator tells it to go with start-stop technology. Now I will show you some examples of hybrids before we move on. Just keep in mind that most of these hybrids are hybrid versions of regular production cars. So each time I say the name of a car, I won't mention the hybrid badging because that will sound very repetitive. Acura ILX, Buick La Crosse, Regal, and Verano E-Assist, Chevy Malibu Eco, Ford C-Max, Ford Escape first generation, second generation, Ford Fusion, First generation, second generation. Hyundai Sonata, Honda Accord. The CRZ, the new Insight, not to be confused with the one mentioned earlier. Kia Optima, Lexus CT200H, ES350H, RX450H. First generation Lincoln MKZ, Porsche Cayenne, and Panamera. Toyota Avalon, Highlander, regular Prius, Prius C, Prius V. What are the drawbacks of having a hybrid? Well, if they still rely on gasoline to be able to run, and acceleration is slower than the typical production car. Batteries are somewhat expensive to replace when they die, and they tend to gobble up cargo space in the trunk. However, not all hybrids are created equal. And some have a price premium not worth the increased fuel economy. In fact, some hybrids have such trivial fuel economy gains that some people even wonder why they exist. Perhaps the most ridiculous example of this is the Lexus 600HL, which costs $42,000 more than the non-hybrid version but only delivers a two mile per gallon increase. It seems like auto manufacturers try to make hybrids stand out from the rest of the lineup by having light colors, especially light blue, and lots of some way, shape, or form of hybrid badging. But that can sometimes turn off average consumers. The hybrid that stands out the most to me is the second generation Lincoln MKZ. What makes it stand out is that it's almost identical to the production car that it's based off of. The interior is like a piece of art, and the optional panoramic sunroof is a pretty cool addition. Oh yeah, and the best part about it is that it costs exactly the same as the non-hybrid version. Plug-in hybrids are very similar to regular hybrids. They just have extra batteries that can be recharged via an electrical outlet. The extra batteries can also greatly increase fuel economy. This segment of the auto industry hasn't been around for very long. Some Prius owners had converted their hybrids into a plug-in variant. Some examples of plug-in hybrids are the Chevy Volt, Ford C-Max Energy, Ford Fusion Energy, the Honda Accord plug-in. As you can see, those extra batteries do gobble up even more cargo space. As far as pricing goes, plug-in hybrids are more expensive than conventional hybrids, but less expensive than electric cars. If money was no objective and you wanted to go green, you probably end up getting a Fisker Karma, which costs a little more than $100,000. It was designed by founder Henrik Fisker, who is best known for designing the BMW Z8. He ended up designing a couple more or less significant cars, 
until he decided to found his own company and devote it to making good-looking cars that are eco-friendly from the inside out. The karma is very sporty. And the wood trim, found throughout the interior, is obtained from sustainable sources. In place of a sunroof, there is a solar roof, which provides power for the car. On top of that, this 5,100 pound beast gets 0 to 60 in around 5.1 seconds. Its biggest downside is when its 50 mile range is depleted, it only gets 21 miles per gallon. Electric vehicles have been around for quite some time. However, until very recently, EVs haven't gained much traction in the car market. Car companies didn't really take making EVs very seriously until Nissan released the LEAF in late 2010 for the 2011 model year. Over the next few years, car companies have begun rollouts of many different EVs. There are many different EVs available today. Some examples are the Fiat 500e, Ford Focus Electric, and the Mitsubishi i. Electric vehicles are designed to run solely on battery power to totally obliterate the days of visiting the gas pump. EVs may be expensive to begin with, but tax discounts that vary from state to state and attractively low monthly rental prices subsidize something that may seem like an overly expensive version of a regular car. Most EVs are fully loaded because they require lots of technology to function. That also means you usually get leather seats and a navigation system integrated in the dash. And many other tech goodies too. Some of these things may sound awesome, but there's something called range anxiety. One of the main reasons why people don't buy electric cars. According to an entry on UrbanDictionary.com, range anxiety is the fear that your electric car won't be sufficiently charged to safely reach an intended destination, return trip, or the next charging station. Using the air conditioning or heater, use up battery power and reduce the range. The standout EV category goes to the Tesla Model S. The main goal of it is to alleviate range anxiety. It has been praised with words that have rarely been used to describe an electric car. It has also won many awards, including Motor Trend's 2013 Car of the Year Award. In early 2013, Elon Musk, CEO and co-founder of Tesla Motors Company, announced that Tesla had had its first profitable quarter in the 10 years of being a company. So, what has made the Tesla Model S so successful? Well, its standard battery goes up to 230 miles on a single charge. It's sporty, it's quick, the base version starts at under $63,000, and an optional bigger battery lasts up to 300 miles on a charge. Its uniqueness doesn't stop there. The Tesla Model S also has impressive 0 to 60 times that range from 4.2 to 5.9 seconds. An optional seating for 7 is available. There is a trunk underneath the front hood that Tesla calls the frunk. A performance-oriented model is available for those that want to unleash its inner sportiness. Perhaps the most impressive thing about it is the 17-inch touchscreen in the center stack that replaces what would otherwise be a clutter of buttons. Right now, electric cars aren't selling very well, and many people hope that the Tesla Model S will raise the bar and turn things around. Many green cars have not taken off yet, but we've only just begun. There are going to be many innovations in the future that keep on giving them a better reputation. They might even come up with some groundbreaking technology to further increase efficiency. All that I know is you just gotta wait to find out.